Uh, welcome to Micro 2020. Um, this is the tutorial on Maestro, uh, a data-centric approach for hardware and mapping explorations for deep learning accelerators. So my name is Tushar Krishna. I'm an assistant professor in the School of ECE at Georgia Tech. And it's my pleasure to uh, welcome my other co-presenters. So Michael Pilawar from NVIDIA, Ganwa Jong from Georgia Tech, Prashant Chhatrasi, who's just about to join IBM, and Felix Kao from Georgia Tech. And I also want to uh, acknowledge uh, some of the folks whose uh, contributions have directly or indirectly uh, you know, affected what we're going to talk about today. So Hyok John Kwon, uh, who recently graduated from Georgia Tech and, and is now at Facebook, was the core developer of Maestro. And our other collaborators, Angshuman Parashar from NVIDIA, Vivek Sarkar uh, from Georgia Tech, and Joel Emmer from NVIDIA and MIT. Um, so this is uh, the agenda that we're going to be following. Um, it's also there on the tutorial website. Uh, so I'm going to kick off the thing, uh, you know, by just introducing DNNs and giving you some very high level overview. And then Michael will talk about DNN accelerators and data flows. And this will essentially give you the background to understand the rest of the tutorial. So then we're going to do a deeper dive into the Maestro cost model, going into the data centric directives that are used as inputs go into some details about the analytical cost model itself, and then uh, spend some time showing how you can compile and run Maestro. Then we'll have a very short break after which we are going to talk about how you can use Maestro to do automated design space exploration. Uh, so we're going to present a few tools, uh, Marvel, Gamma, and Confucius, which let you do mapping space and hardware design space exploration. So there's going to be a brief Q&A at the end of each talk. Uh, and we strongly encourage you to use Zoom's Q&A feature. Uh, for most of the attendees, you, you do not have access to, you know, ask questions uh, via audio, but we encourage you to use Zoom's Q&A feature. You can also upvote other questions, and we'll also answer the questions live or respond via the Q&A box. And the slides and videos of whatever we're going to talk about today will be available on the Maestro tutorial website. And of course, the entire Tutorial is also being recorded, so it will be available via Whova uh, for you to, to watch later as well. Um, so this is a very brief outline of what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to just set some context about what this tutorial is about. Then I'm going to present some resources uh, just so that you have an, uh, you know where you can find resources on whatever we are going to present today. Um, sorry. Yeah. And then, um, and then I will go into some relevant background on DNS. So what this tutorial is about, right? So uh, of course, if you're attending this, you're, you're, uh, you are probably working uh, in some form uh, in deep learning. Deep learning has made massive strides across applications and vision, speech, language, and recommendation systems. And if you look at the deep learning landscape, uh, it kind of works in the following manner. You have a model that you need to create. You train this model with a lot of data. Once you have a trained model, you deploy it for inference. Uh, inference could be on the cloud or it could be on edge devices. And there's a lot of custom accelerators that are being developed to run this inference. Now, if you look at design tools in this entire landscape, uh, there's tools like you know, PyTorch, TensorFlow Cafe that help you uh, work at the model creation side. There's tools uh, and libraries that help you with you know, uh, training your workloads uh, efficiently on large distributed clusters. And there's tools that help you also, you know, map these uh, uh, train models onto your uh, actual accelerator. Uh, but on the actual accelerator design side, uh, there is there's not a lot of tools. And essentially, that's the space that Maestro comes in. So we're going to be talking about Maestro, which essentially lets you do design space exploration for uh, inference accelerators. So some resources are related to as what uh, we're going to be talking about. Um, so the Maestro webpage, which is hosted at, at maestro.ece.gartec.edu, has uh, links to our papers and a wiki uh, with details how the tool works. Uh, there's also the GitHub project for Maestro, which includes the Maestro cost model and some of the other tools that we're going to present today, which essentially use Maestro for design space exploration. And on the right is the actual tutorial website. This is like a, a shorter link for that. This is the full link. Um, and it's also, you know, pinned on the make, uh, micro website. So this is where uh, we're going to host the slides and videos. And there's also a Docker image that we're providing for uh, Maestro uh, that has the examples that we're going to be showing today. 
Uh, I also want to mention a couple of synthesis lectures in this topic. So the, the left one titled Data Orchestration and Deep Learning Accelerators uh, was uh, co-authored by, you know, some of us uh, who are running the tutorial. So uh, Michael and myself and also Hyogjan, uh, Angshu and Anand. And the, the synthesis lectures on the right uh, that was authored by Vivian, Yushin, Tian, Ju and Joel uh, also goes into some of the topics that we're going to be talking about. Um, so let's let me just give you some brief relevant background to understand, uh, you know, and get everybody on the same page. So I expect most of you know all of this, but you know, what is a DNN? Well, it's inspired by biological neural networks. So that's where a lot of the terms come from. So there's neurons and there's synapses. And the idea is that each synapse has a weight associated with it for neuron activation. So you have a bunch of inputs coming in from the neurons. Uh, and you do a weighted sum with the weights and then you apply an activation function, you get the outputs which become the inputs for the next layer. And uh, in terms of the modern deep learning landscape, if you look at the inference process, uh, suppose I give an image to a large neural network, which might consist of a bunch of layers which are internally made up of the neurons I just talked about. So you might have convolutional layers that will extract certain features, then you have some layers to summarize these features. And if you've trained your network well, it will identify that this image is actually for uh, your Georgia Institute of Technology in Atlanta. So in terms of the computations within a DNN, uh, that would be important for us to, to keep in mind as architects designing accelerators are the following. So ultimately, the, the nice thing is that a lot of the DNN uh, uh, computations essentially boil down to classic linear algebra operations. So if you look at a neuron uh, with a bunch of inputs and weights and it's doing a weighted sum, you can actually view this as a simple vector vector dot product, right? So you have a vector of inputs, a vector of weights, and you multiply this and you get uh, the output. And uh, if you have a bunch of neurons, uh, so then you essentially have a matrix of weights, each of them corresponding to the inputs of each neuron. So you, so the same input getting fanned out to all of these neurons boils down to a vector matrix uh, product. Now, the interesting thing here is this same input is going to be multiplied by all of the weights. So it's going to be uh, do a dot product with all of these columns. So there is an opportunity to reuse this input across a bunch of weights. And this is a concept that we'll keep coming back to throughout the tutorial data reuse. And if I have a batching where I have a bunch of inputs going through uh, my neural network, uh, I let's say have a stream of inputs that I, that are running through this train network. Then now I have a matrix of inputs and a matrix of weights. So it's a matrix matrix multiplication, often also called a gem. And now I have reuse opportunities of inputs across weights and weights across inputs. And if you go to more uh, stylized neural networks like convolutional neural networks, where uh, it's not just a simple multi-layer perceptron, which is what I was talking about so far, where you just have you know. Uh, fully connected layers one after the other. But in a convolutional neural network, the, the weights are more stylized. So you have shared weights. So uh, all neurons actually use the same filter weights. So again, I'm not going to go into the, 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 the math behind this, but from an architect's view, what this boils down to is the fact that this weight kernel is now shifting. Um, and so as this weight kernel shifts across uh, an image, you get even more opportunities for reuse because of this sliding window. So essentially, in terms of a convolutional operation, uh, it looks something like this. You have a filter uh, and you have an input image. You take this filter, apply this to, to this image, uh, get one output and you slide this around to get the output image. Now in a CNN, you have many, many input channels. You can, at the very first layer, you can view this as, you know, uh, just RGB for an image. So you might have three channels. Uh, once you go deeper into the networks, these channels increase. Um, so you have a bunch of input channels uh, and uh, filter channels, and then you have a bunch of filters. When you apply many filters, the number of filters lead to uh, many output channels. And again, these output channels essentially become input channels for the next layer. And if you have, so this is the, the, the case I mentioned where you have many filters, one image, but if you have batching, you might have multiple images, which lead to multiple output images as well, each of them with this behavior. So um, at a high level, this, you can view this as seven loops that are running across the input dimensions, the channel dimension, the filtered dimensions, uh, and the batch dimensions. And again, this loop nest is something that we're going to keep coming back to uh, multiple times in this tutorial. 
So one of the key challenges with DNN computations is the is the fact that there's millions of parameters of weights in uh, neural networks today. Uh, so uh, modern networks have millions of weights, which lead to billions of computations, which means at a very fundamental level, you need a lot of parallel computations uh, in order to run this, a lot of parallel compute in your hardware in order to run this. And um, there is heavy data movement because not all of these weights can fit on chip. And as most of you know, the cost of moving data becomes progressively more expensive as you go uh, off chip. So you fundamentally, like if you have to run these efficiently, you need to reduce energy. And at a high level, CPUs are inefficient for the first piece. Uh, even if you have multi-core CPUs, there's only, you know, tens of ALUs that you can run every cycle. GPUs are better because GPUs have, you know, hundreds or thousands of ALUs that can run these computations, which is why GPUs actually led to the deep learning revolution in the first place. But DPUs are inefficient from an energy perspective because they're fundamentally just communicating via memory. Uh, so this has led to, you know, uh, a Cambrian explosion of uh, accelerators that are often called spatial or data flow style accelerators. From a hundred foot view, all accelerator accelerators look like this. They have a bunch of ALUs that are tightly coupled and they have, they are connected with some uh, custom on chip network and a memory hierarchy. Since you have billions of computations, the idea is you want to spread these computations across hundreds of ALUs and to avoid heavy data movement, you want to reuse the data within the array uh, via local memories and direct communication. Um, so one of the key challenges in, you know, designing and deploying DNNs is the fact that once you have a model that you've trained, now at the inference stage, you have to take this model, map it onto your hardware, which has these hundreds or thousands of processing elements, and they might be, you know, myriad accelerator microarchitectures. And together, this determines your overall energy efficiency and runtime. So the focus of this tutorial and Maestro is essentially on this piece, the, the mapping piece onto hardware and, you know, uh, uh, various accelerator microarchitectures. Uh, so with that context, uh, I'll just very briefly give a snapshot of what Maestro does. I mean, it's an analytical cost model, which takes a bunch of inputs like the DNN layer description, the hardware description, the mapping description, uh, and it essentially lets you analyze uh, things like, you know, energy, uh, performance, memory requirements, and so on. And using this, as I said, we can do extensive design space exploration that we're going to talk about. So with that, welcome to the tutorial. Um, and this is the, the, the agenda once again. As I said, this is also on the tutorial website. And uh, at this point, I'm going to hand it over to Michael, who's go going to do a deeper dive into DNN data flows. So Michael, you can. it's all yours. 